It's the end of an era. 2023 is done here at Sloppy Seconds. And to go out with a bang, oh, no. we have the amazing... <laughs> oh, Has that been there the whole time? You need to see the doctor. Oh, God. We have the amazing Sasha Valor on the show with us today. We talk all about We're Here and their book, The Big Reveal, and their upcoming live show, The Big Reveal, live. <laughs> we also make them uncomfortable with some of your disgusting sex stories. But, Y'all need Jesus. But please keep calling in. We love to hear people, it. Come again. Come on. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. And happy Hanukkah. Thank you. Bye now. M. Oh. M. Mom. Wow, and I'm going to say it's a big old bus. You turn around and boom, you end up with the. I need a little stop. Now I get the job. I used to have you stupid little f***ing asshole, f*** you stupid little f***. So I was like, I'm a big dipper meatball. I'm meatball, and that's big dipper. Hello. Hello. How are you feeling today? Ho, 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 and holiday ho, hum. I'm holiday heart. <laughs> would, it, would it be wrong of me to say that that wig is evocative of, remember when Christina Aguilera was doing big hair? Yeah, 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 when she was black. It's... <laughs> It's in that realm. Yes. To me. It's very that. It's um, wigs by tips. I always love her big hair. And yes. remember, I had this in the Honey Blonde, and you said that wig would look good in bright red. And I saw it in bright red, and I bought it. Ah! Fashion advice from me? Well, more like I need more wigs. Okay. Smart. You know yeah. what Delta said to me, and then we'll jump in? What? She texted me the other day, and she goes, she sent me a side-by-side -side of two uh, episodes of Very Delta. And she said, first time I ever wore the same wig twice. First time! Well, she's been doing it for so long, and she has a a, a whole storage unit just for wigs. She's 300. 300 wigs? Ask her about it. We'll get her back on the pod. All right, why don't what? you introduce our iconic and amazing okay. guest? Our guest today is an icon, a legend, an artistic person. <laughs> why did you put... Oh, she is iconic, artistic, academic, groundbreaking, show-stopping, boundary-pushing. She is the icon. It is Sasha, Sasha Valor! Hello. 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 Oh, how are you? I'm so good. I'm so happy to be here. I'm so happy Thank that you're here. Thank you for here. that very generous introduction. Artistic. It's nice to be among other artists. Yeah. <laughs> Where are they? You earned it. They're <laughs> on my me. shirt. Art. I art, wore art, art today. Art. 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 Um, you're obviously here in Los Angeles. We're so happy to have you. Is it weird LA for you? Are you like such a diehard New Yorker that you're like, it is strange over here on the West Coast? It is a little strange. <laughs> don't don't you trash. agree? It's a yes. trash city. It's weird. It has, it has weird vibes. It does. It feels like haunted everywhere. <laughs> well, I think. For real? Uh -huh, well, I, think, yeah. I believe the hotel Spooky. you're staying at is technically haunted. What? Yes. <laughs> don't tell me this now. I have five more nights there. <clears throat> Maybe in only four. Oh, you know I know? have heard all of those Yeah, but stories. I think it might be the one downtown is the haunted No, one. that's the one. It's yeah. the one downtown. A lot of murders. I don't think a lot of ghosts go. There's a lot know, of. Well, yeah, a lot of ghosts don't go to Hollywood. It's a little shiny over there. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> they want to be downtown. That's where I'm going to be when I die. <laughs> 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 where the fancy people are. Maybe one day. You're we'll always where there. the fancy people are. I feel like you bring a fanciness to every yeah. room that you walk it's into. It's all smoke and mirrors. <laughs> good plug. Oh, good plug. I think Thank it's all, you. Thank show. you. I think it's actually all posture. Yeah. You really have amazing posture. Just like a stick up my ass? No. <laughs> I feel like it's presentational. It's like really gorgeous. Most people don't sit like that in the chair. Thank you. My dress is very tight. Oh, okay. To be fair. <laughs> she goes, I'm trying to breathe. Uh -huh. I'm <laughs> trying to breathe. We had Crystal um, from Drag Race UK on, and she fully corseted to sit in the chair wow. for one oh, yeah. hour. And we were like, but your legs. They're going like, to go numb. But the silhouette from shoulders. That's, away. Exactly, that's exactly what mm -hmm. she said. She looks gorgeous. Okay, so the world knows you from winning season nine of Drag Race. Um, you were doing like a lot of drag and performance in Brooklyn prior to being on Drag Race. Do you feel like, though, after you won the show... Like the doors just opened wide for you to do oh, drag yes. anywhere. <laughs> Literally, I could not get a booking in Manhattan before getting cast on Drag Race. Really? Really? Yes, I had one booking. It was for Halloween at Bob the Drag Queen's show. <laughs> <laughs> they were like, like, "You're you spooky." I mean, yeah, bring <laughs> <Bobby> over here. <laughs> <laughs> I, was like, get her I was like, "Okay, great. I'll wait for next year to get wow. my second That's booking." So crazy. And then, of course, everyone. The second that it was announced that I was cast, or even the rumors started happening, it was an overnight change in what kind of 
what do you think that, that was that they just didn't appreciate like what you were bringing to the table? I think there's just something about Drag Race that like tells people what drag is, mm. and. I think, I mean, like, it kind of tells me something about drag in the world. Like, we don't have enough ways for people to l learn about it. Yeah. Right. It, it's all about this show still. And right. I think, like, I mean, since that was the system, I was like, I better get on that show. Because <laughs> right. I, I believed in myself. Even yeah. if no one else did. Which is so crazy because you were already doing what I consider as, like, such elevated drag before you were on the show. Like, I remember watching a video from you at, like, Austin Drag Stop Festival. It. Oh, my God. When it was the first time I had seen someone use, like, a screen, like, a projection like that. And I was like, that's not normal drag. That's, like, better than drag. Oh, and so it's so you. strange that no one wanted to work with you. The Did drag, you drag queens got me. Oh, okay. It was, but it's like, you know. The club owners were like. Projector? Projector. Projector no. screen. Ding, ding. Even at that, even at that Austin drag fest, I had to fight. I was like in there in the afternoon when the club opened with my little like USB, being like, uh, I have a really big plan for tonight. They're like, okay, but we have no idea who you are. Sit oh down, we'll get to you. That is so crazy. But you know. Well, so how do. does it feel like being thrust into the spotlight right after drag race and like being booked everywhere? It was like it was overwhelming. Really? You know? But I also like I Really wanted to do a good job at everything, but so that but the change from like I have one gig once a month to now I'm working three times a week that was a real shock, and I had to learn wow. how to like do everything a little differently. Damn. Yeah, but that's so long ago now. It is. Yeah. So long now ago. you're up to new it's stuff. Seven years. Isn't that crazy? Seven, almost eight years. We're, oh my god. We're talking about season nine on Race Chaser right now. Yes. So I'm currently rewatching <laughs> the season. And it is so wild. And something Peppermint brought up is when your season nine aired, and I promise we're gonna talk about new stuff. I promise. But yes. we're just we like to start from the very beginning like <laughs> here. Um Bald. Bald. But. When your season aired, I think the episodes were even shorter than 40 minutes because they were doing some weird thing with Wendy Williams and Ross Matthews, like talking about the episode while it aired and it like ate up like I eight more minutes. And so we were watching like 33 minute episodes of Drag Race that season because oh. it was the first time it was on VH1. People don't know how lucky they are to have had the 50 <laughs> the minutes. The 90-minute minute episode? It, it yeah, complained about all I don't remember year. that at all. You really don't? No, not at it all. It was Wendy we Williams short. like saying homophobic <laughs> to Ross Matthews. Yes, I think it stopped midway, actually, because it was going so badly. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. What was, in that time period, what was like the weirdest, very much not Valorian gig that you did like did you like present a new nissan car <laughs> did you like like did you have any sort of like super weird hmm. you know sort of ob obligatory gig you had to do the, i mean just the circuit of clubs that i went to and like, i remember going to parliament house yes. in, oh God. <laughs> in um in orlando. orlando oh my god i love that the place. buildings like the building where they put us was like falling down uh -huh. on the outskirts of this place and like in the dressing room is all these Miss Continental divas. Mm -hmm. Like Chantelle DeMarco was right there, and I am putting on my Gollum number <laughs> backstage, like gluing my little like pieces of hair right here. And I look in the mirror, and Chantelle DeMarco is like looking at me, like, <laughs> and then like whispering to the other girls. <laughs> and then I went out there on the stage, and everyone ate it up. Yeah, absolutely. And they were like, We still think you're hideous, but. You did do a good you number. Tore, you <laughs> tore, but you may look like, hideous, but that happens to me every time I'm traveling, and it's like it's always like a Miss Continental or someone, and I like take my shirt off, and it's like hairy chest and like my back, and they're up, like, and they're just like, and you didn't want to shave that. Like, they like, always have something shady to frightened. say. Yeah, they're like, ugh, gross. I remember when I was filming um, that thing for Hulu. Bianca Del Rio had never seen my shoulders, and I like. <laughs> Pulled my thing out, and she goes, "Girl, you got a squirrel on your shoulder." Like, she was like shocked by it. That means you're doing it right. Am I? Yes, yeah. absolutely. I was looking at those Scaparelli earrings. Mm, yes, wealth, mama, wealth. Okay, I <laughs> one time a... purchase. Well, I've worn them, the worn them for two years. <laughs> 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 that would be me with any piece of jewelry I spend money on. I'm so cheap. What'd you spend on that? I don't know. I bought it downtown. Have you visited downtown here yet? Like yes. on fabric shopping and stuff? See, downtown feels like New York, and I love it yes. there. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It smells like piss. Hustle, yes. bustle. That, that smell the of fabric. Piss. Haggling. Mm -hmm. Do you haggle? People screaming. Or are you so rich now that you're like, I'll pay whatever you okay. say? I still haggle. Okay. Yeah, yeah I, like I, like that. Well. I like that. But, but only like two back and forths, and then it feels yeah. rude. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah it's I'm part of the lady. culture. 
Yeah. 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 It's kind of like you have to. Mm-hmm. They know. They know. The first price is not the price. Oh no no no! And then they'll always lie and be like, "Oh, this is actually like thirty five dollars a yard." And I was like, "Well, down the street it was fifteen. So what's the truth?" And then mm. you let them rub up on you a little bit. And <laughs> yeah, they sometimes like to get a little handsy. Real, and that helps. Yeah. Well, no. <laughs> <laughs> they charge you and more. They, actually, one time the guy did. He was like fifteen dollars a yard, and then he grabbed me, and I was like, "Okay, ten. He goes, "No, still fifteen. <laughs> okay. Is this true? You are a Fulbright scholar. I guess I was a Fulbright scholar. <laughs> That's like a big deal. That's I always huge. thought you were just being braggadocious in your clat first. Stop it. I was. <laughs> <laughs> it was so distasteful. No, um, I think that's amazing. Art. Art. Mm-hmm. Fulbright. What was yeah. it for? It was it was to study art in Russia. Oh shit. And I was interested in looking at like art that was free for everyone to look at, like out on the streets, public oh. art, and how it was affecting politics in such a conservative country. But with a strong tradition of like political art that right. goes against the institutions. So I was like, how can that be that they allow art that is critical of Putin? And it, it f- turns out, okay, now I'm getting into it. No, but, I'm getting into it. That's it's interesting. Because I have something... It seems there's such a tradition of art that flies in the face of the institution that it almost like doesn't register as being really political anymore. It's just kind of like in this abstract art world and the people who are really, what I observed was the people like the queer community that's really fighting to exist, they want nothing to do with art and they didn't feel like it could change the world. Interesting. So that kind of bummed me out. But it was one of the things that pushed me into drag because I started thinking about drag as this place where people do believe that art can make a, a real difference yeah. in all people's lives, even if it's just like entertaining and spreading joy and blah, blah, blah. So I was like, okay, let me get my hope back by putting on a little cat eye and some lipstick. Yeah. That's so cool. The the Keith uh, Herring exhibit just toured here. Oh, wow. And, you know, like the whole sort of like ethos of his message is like art is for, for everyone, everyone and it is everywhere. So $22 to get into the exhibit. <laughs> and then across the street, so that was at the Broad, and then across the street at LACMA, they had um, a big marketing sign up that's that basically said, like, art is for everyone, our museum is free. Yep. Ooh, smart. <laughs> and it was kind smart, of a smart, gag smart. Smart. Yes. where I was like, oh, well, I want to go see the Keith stuff, but also, cool, good marketing. Because, yeah. like, it did feel weird to walk around this exhibit where literally it just kept being like, his message was art should be free and for everyone. <laughs> and I'm like, bitch, we had to pay $22 to get in here. Also, they're now making like neon signs of his art and selling it. And yeah. I was like, that's exactly what he would want. <laughs> he would definitely like his stuff on t-shirts at H&M. That's what <laughs> right. he <wanted. laughs> Oh my God. Um, so, but you recently got to illustrate the cover of The New Yorker, which is yes. insane. Uh, what was that experience insane. like? Um, they just like reached out to me. So the backstory oh, so they came to you. <laughs> they came to me. Okay. Um, okay. The backstory is I worked for my day job before I drag full time was working for the cover cover editor. So I actually have like not uh, for the New Yorker for her other business which publishes comic books for kids. God. So I I knew her from way back and like would go to her like living room and literally like lay out books and pet relationships her are everything. That's mm-hmm. Don't so burn cool. bridges. You've really done it all. That's right. Well, just like three things <laughs> over and over again. She's like, just, just like study Russian art and comic books, and here I am. So, I am. so I did the cover. I did the cover. Self portrait. Self portrait. She like. Well, you had to make sure it was about you. <laughs> <laughs> it was. It was originally going to be about someone else. <laughs> <laughs> um, I pitched. I pitched like a couple different options, and they selected the one where I was cleaning my lipstick off my teeth, which, as you've seen already, is a very uh, necessary activity before you go out and show yourself to people. I mean, that used to be my whole judge was that I had lipstick on my teeth when I performed, and everyone would always be like, "Clean it off," and I was like, "No, I like put it there." <laughs> Yes, that's hot. And that's when my character was named Georgia Crisp, and she was like an 80-year-old woman, what? and she would blackout drink, and I would always perform with a glass of wine in my hand. When what? was that? Wow. When I first started drag, like eight years ago. What is it? Georgia. Georgia Crisp? It's like Re- Georgia, but twice. <laughs> Georgia. Re- Georgia. <laughs> Georgia again. Yeah, Georgia again. I've never known Georgia. Re- well, she Re- was a mess, Georgia. and she was like in my real blackout phase, and I would drink red wine oh, so that part was all real. night. Yeah. <laughs> To, yeah, You're it was like, a problem. It's a character. It's a character, it's a character choice. The lipstick is meant if to be there. you saw that the... zebra dress come out, you knew it was going to be a problem. Ooh, when... We should bring her back. <laughs> <laughs> should we? <laughs> yeah, as performance art. Oh, yes, 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 yes. When you first started, would you ever just be like, DJ, put on that 
Kesha song and like do a pop song. No, it was always like a concept to to a fault. Yeah. What do you mean to a fault? To a fault. Oh, just because it's like that's so much so extra. <laughs> But that's what's so great about you is that there is so much thought. My dear friend Madeline Hatter <laughs> in New York yes. City. <laughs> we know Madeline. We know Miss Madeline. Told me I would never get booked if I did not simplify my oh. setup. But I found a way. Yeah, yeah, you did it. You slay. And now she brings video everywhere. See try. that, Madeline? Well, she can't bring a video to Metropolitan. You can play it on one of those little screens oh, above the bar. You perform yes. with your head on. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. All right, let's take a break. We'll be right back. And we're, we're back. back. Hello. Hello. Now you are not the only Sasha that won Drag Race. Not anymore. How exciting! Your sister Sasha Colby has snatched a crown. I mean, we all saw it coming. Oh, right? people were writing with on the wall. Very real. When did you first like become aware of Sasha Colby? Um, prior to going on Drag Race. Yeah. Through YouTube videos of her Miss Continental yeah. performance, oh, yeah, which yeah, I yeah. like, you know, where she's like. I imagine myself with my ponytail and like, whoosh, and like all is, the backup dancers and the oh, so it good. is so crazy because that's like not the highest quality video and it's a wide shot yes. and the way she moves her body like you can feel her body and you can yes. feel what she's doing yeah, yeah 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 and it's just like it's so cool that it can come through the camera like that because she really like performs with every yes element of her body so yeah. even from a wide shot it's telling a story yeah i well, i don't know that we've explicitly had i think i mean we've had some 15 girls on the show we had selena on the show yes, but like i don't know like i wonder what it must have been like to be in the room when sasha walked in and you're like well maybe i can do second place <laughs> <laughs> Fair. <laughs> like it just seems so crazy it is insane that yeah. she just like ate it up and she had such a history before she got on the show that I would be terrified to be in a room with her Yeah. speaking of being terrified to be in a room with someone remember when you booked me for nightgown <laughs> I was so scared I was really yeah because no. like you're like an icon and like incredible and so when I asked to be in it, um, <laughs> and you were like, yeah, that's fine. I was like, oh Just God, like I gotta do it, I gotta do it up. And so you had been doing it for like, what, a half year before that? Like, it, it was, was pretty like early, uh, it was month. I mean, we've been, Nikon's has been around since 2015. Yes. But we had like, you know, on and off, blah, right. blah, blah. The Quibi but show. You were at our like, oh, yeah, second Nikon's at Sasha that venue. With Sasha Colby. And Colby. And yes. Sasha Colby, yes. yes. And the she show. rolled down the stairs. She rolled the she rolled down the stairs. Um, it was iconic. Stopped yes. herself. Um, but yeah, that was our first night. That was like month two or oh, three really? of oh, nightgowns okay. at La Poisson Rouge, which is this historic music venue. Which I was terrified. I was like, she's you? such a genius. She's so smart. She's not gonna want to talk to me. I was like sitting there doing my makeup, like I don't even know what to talk about with anybody. And then you were like so fun and so friendly. I was like, this you. is not you didn't bother me at all. I was just like, who I was like, is this? What you doing she's now so on your face? <laughs> oh oh like, yes, I, no way. I went, I went, um I had done like the full Delta number first. Right. And then I like took off the makeup and she came out of the dressing room and she went, oh what are you doing? And I was like, oh, I'm going to be George Santos. And you're like, interesting. And like, walked away. So for people listening who aren't aware, when your performance of George Santos went super viral, it was at Sasha's, Sasha's event, mm -hmm. Nightgown. In New York City. And did you know that Meatball was doing this George Santos thing? Well, Meatball had tweeted, I'm going to do This, <laughs> this is, is Me, me. from yes. The Greatest Showman. And I was like, ha ha. Yeah. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah, I don't think anyone thought <laughs> no it was real. No one thought it was real but as at it all. clicked into place on stage, <laughs> I mean, I did receive the track, and I was like, okay, <laughs> okay oh my God, what's going to happen oh God, here? Gonna be a bad <laughs> I knew it was going to be iconic, but it was so much beyond. It was, was crazy. Did you expect the no, reaction? No, not at all. I thought virality? it was going to be, like, flat. I thought it was going to fall flat and, like, <laughs> which is going to be bad. Because I was literally in my hotel room, like, finishing the costume, like, hot, like gluing it together. Work. And, um... I was just like, this is not going to be good. This is going to be so bad. And I like went up there. Because after the Delta work number, I remember you were on the mic and you had to like explain camp to the audience. <laughs> <laughs> just you, in case. Yeah, you were like, and so that's what we call camp drag. And like, I was like, it was oh, not God. Like that. <laughs> it was not like that. It was not like that. It's what it felt like for me. But yes, no, you were like super nice about it. And then, um, I don't know, I went out there and did it and like, 
I had like never felt like that. We, it, the audience felt weird. Like it felt crazy. They lost their. Yeah, I was just yeah. like screaming the whole time, and I was like, I've never done anything like this before. So it was like such an honor to be able to do it there for an audience that like really appreciates drag. I'm so honored that you and, brought like, that. And like wanted to see good drag, and then they saw me. But then they saw other good drag people. <laughs> <Shut up. laughs> they got it. They got it. I feel like, I mean, and then it went completely viral. Oh, yeah, it went insane. Everyone was talking about it. Like, the it. next day, it went insane. And I was like, oh, this is bigger than I thought it was. Your number worked on so many levels because it, it is just, like, a hilarious parody of George Santos. Yeah. But then if you really get drag, it's like a parody of bad drag. Mm -hmm. and that was the goal. It is so effective. I watch it all the time. Well, I still watch, <laughs> like, I think it's so insane that at, like, every Nightgowns, you're doing three new numbers. Two, two new numbers and then uh, one recycled. Uh, <laughs> but yeah. I still, I'll take well, my two. I, well, one, I mean, we call that from the archive. The archival. The archival, yes, archival exactly. number. <laughs> Wait, so how did you develop Nightgowns as like a show and as an idea that would reoccur? Um, that went back to when I, you know, I had no booking, so I was yeah. making them for myself and my little dive bar that no longer exists called Bizarre Bushwick. That was like oh, yeah, legendary I remember space. That. Oh yeah, a lot of people got their start. Like Mary Cherry got her start there. Yeah. All the Brooklyn figures. She's on the upgrade. Yes. Um, and how did it start? I just wanted different types of drag, yeah. which was not always, that's not how shows were getting booked. Back in 2015, <laughs> it was like, <laughs> it was kind of rare to have like a drag king, a drag queen, mm -hmm. right. let alone like maybe like a live singing person and a more camp person and more whatever. Right. Um, so the goal is just mix that all. And then I, like you said, I like, you know, man's playing drag in between every number. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but so I the think... wax poetic about but what I everything means. I thought that means. that was what was so incredible, incredible about it before it was even picked up by Quibi for the TV show was that it was like every lineup you were like, oh, there's like everybody in this. And it was queens that I knew because... I was like in the underground drag scene, but it was like, I was like, she's exposing people to drag that normally wouldn't be seen. And I don't think I would have known about Miss Malice at all if right. you hadn't have had her up there. And now I'm like obsessed oh my with God. her. Yeah. She's, she's so good. And yeah. also, well, we'll talk about it later, but I like that you're getting drunk on camera now. <laughs> so of course, naughty. you ate that up. <laughs> I love that. I watched the whole damn thing. Like, <laughs> was so good. I was literally like, Sasha Valore drunk? What? That's fun. Yeah. I like you on YouTube. I like you on YouTube, too. Uh, and I liked... Okay, so how did the deal with Quibi myself. come around? Um, literally, I came to LA and, like, poured myself out to everyone who would take a meeting with me. <laughs> uh -huh. And I was just like, this... I believe there's something with this show, Nightgowns, that has not been shown in drag. And just, like, the way we exist backstage with each other, the way the show happens. It's, like, not about competition, uplifting each other. Felt like a little bit of positivity in yeah. drag. Um... And then Quibi picked it up, which was they had a lot of money and a lot of like excitement, and then it became kind of a parody of itself. Quick bites, <laughs> quick bites, mm -hmm. quick bites. I mean, I consumed that show so intensely. Oh yeah. And I mean, you guys even got picked up for a season two before Quibi fully folded. Yeah. Which is like really incredible. That's it was gonna be. A, it was gonna be so exciting. Yeah. Too. But that's kind of like the 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 Hollywood story, right? Like yeah. you just sort of go like, and now what do we do next? Like you've proven that your concept works. It's just right. about finding the right avenue. And you've really like made so much space for yourself. Mm -hmm. Obviously you bring along people with you, but uh, you've really sort of like carved out a unique way to tour by yourself in large theater venues that a lot of people weren't doing before. You carved out like a, a like unique way to present a book. A lot of people, maybe even drag queens have done the like, oh, I'm gonna write my memoir. Or like I got a book deal, but you're doing it in such a unique and like true to you way. Mm -hmm. you, oh, I feel you. like you really, the big reveal. You yes, yes your book's the big reveal. Thank well, you. Thank we'll you. Get, yes. We're gonna get to Every, all of everyone, these knows. everyone everyone yeah, knows. Everyone already fucking knows. Everyone knows. <laughs> knows. <laughs> Um, how do you, I feel like, you, and you do all of this so well because you take your time. Mm. Mm -hmm. Is that always slow. been part of your process? Slow. slow, bitch. Slow. I'm really slow, slow too. I'm super slow. <laughs> no, you're very fast. <sighs> yeah, I think you are fast. I don't know about all that. How, <sighs> has, has being slow or taking your time always been a part of your process? Or do you feel now because your platform is so big, like, there's pressure to get it right. And that's what it's, also uh, it's always you. been part of it. Yeah. Like I, I wish I had learned earlier on how to go quickly. Yeah. 
because at this point it's like the only way I know how to make anything that's good. <laughs> right. I could make it, but I feel like I've I have a very I'm much harsh. I feel this is normal, like much harsher on myself oh, and my yeah. numbers, but I still feel like I'm maybe happy with it like half the time yeah. with what I put out. I feel the same way. Um, I sometimes can't watch recordings of myself because I'm like, I know that part where I made a mistake, it's coming up, and I'd rather not see it. Right, exactly. Yeah. But you can, like, learn little by little yeah. sometimes. <laughs> sometimes I can't fix it. Yeah. I'm like, okay, I'm just going to mess that up every time. Um, so how yeah. did the book come about? The Big Reveal. The Big Reveal, <laughs> an illustrated manifesto of drag, uh, available now on my website. And everywhere books. Are I should have brought sold. it today because I need to get it signed. Oh, God yeah, damn it! Smart. I can run home. I'll bring it tonight. Perfect. <laughs> um. Yeah, I wanted to write. I I really wanted to write like a book about drag. Right. Like not even my memoirs. Like my childhood is not interesting. Whatever. <laughs> like my parents supported me. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> oh, dude, how many pages can we have of that? But I did want to give credit to like who shaped. Mm -hmm. my sense of the world and of drag so I had to get I did give credit to my parents and my grandparents who were supportive and I recognize that's like a special yeah positive story in this time of right tragedy around drag um and then like the the history of I'm not a historian but learning about what drag already has been in the world and how much it's shaped culture and pop culture as we know it and is very inspiring to yeah. me. So I was well, like, I had to tell that story. Yeah, my favorite part about it is that you use references of like your own story and coming up in drag when explaining drag, or like not explaining drag, but like describing the different types of drag. And it's man's like, man when you're mansplaining drag, bald. <laughs> and it's um, I don't know. It was just like a, such a great read, and I like sped through it. It was so okay. good. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. And I often don't read. So. <laughs> when are you gonna do an too. audio? I know that's my favorite part was all the pictures. <laughs> when are you gonna do an audio book of it? I did, I recorded it. Ha! It's probably on ha! Uh, Audible. Audible. It's on Audible already. Yes. No, let's I went to the, the studio. You I had my what? tea. Ooh. <gasps> I had to put How a pillow over my stomach because it was like gurgling too loud <laughs> for the very high tech microphones. Oh. oh, it was cute, and they told me how to pronounce all these things I was saying wrong as I wrote the book. What like word? there was a producer there who had gone through my book and researched the pronunciation of everything. I was like, okay. What were some words? Well, yeah, give us a couple. Oh, words. just like the names of dry, like Meilan Fan from the Chinese opera, yes. which I was always saying wrong. Got it. And I what did you I say? Remember, I said like Meilan L'Enfant. She's, well, you, yeah, said she's French. French. you said French. She's French. French. Anything fancy and beautiful is exactly. French. Uh, of course. <laughs> um, what I think is so interesting about the history, I think, of drag in, as like an art form is often the like straight and mainstream representations are excluded from this history, which is like, oh, we're talking about like queer drag. Mm -hmm. We're talking about like underground, like secret clubs where mm -hmm. there were drag entertainers expressing themselves. And then you're like, oh no, let's talk about Mrs. Doubtfire. Let's talk about yeah. Martin Lawrence on Martin playing Shanene. And like that is drag. That's most the, people's first yeah. right. impression of what But drag they go is. like, oh, that's a straight man or that's a comedian. I mean, and they're making fun of the woman. Therefore, it isn't like part of the narrative of like the beautiful art artistic history of drag. But it's just interesting that those things get like excluded or you know. I think and we have to own that drag has been used to make fun of people. Yes. Exactly. And like that is still drag. Like <laughs> <laughs> mostly ourselves. Mrs. Claus. <laughs> Mrs. AKA Doubtfire. Mrs. Aguilera. <clears throat> just kidding. But I think, you know, I think everyone who, you know, puts on a little transformation. It's got a, something, a little touch of queerness. Oh, I don't yes. for think, sure. I don't think things are as binary or straight as the world likes to pretend. No, oh, not at all. You wouldn't want to look this gorgeous if you didn't have a little, a little sugar. Bag in you. <laughs> a little sugar in your tank. <laughs> a little sugar yeah. in your tank. Um, so did you like writing a book? No, I, I actually really hated it. I feel How like long most did it people take do. You? It took me three years. It was like during the pandemic, and then like I started touring again, and I couldn't at all write when I was doing drag or oh, anything. Yeah. It was really hard. Yeah. Like I love, I, I don't love writing a text message, let alone <laughs> <laughs> a book. <laughs> so we're more similar than I thought. I never write back. Yeah, it seems like such a huge endeavor. Yeah, it is. I'm amazed that people do that as like their job. As their jo and they're just like have fun with it. Yeah. <laughs> 
It's like many, every like, did you have word to, like, <laughs> agony. <laughs> did you have to set up like, okay, today I'm writing 10 pages or like today I have yeah. to sit down and write? Yeah, but sometimes I'd write like 10 words and then be like, <gasps> you're stupid. <laughs> you're bad at this. <laughs> oh, like, no. give up. But well, how do you get past there. that? Like self-judgment, self-doubt. Um, just like trying again the next day. <laughs> <laughs> just a nap. A nap. Honestly, yeah. Nap. Nap. A couple crackers, little cheese, reset. A couple shrimp. You like shrimp? <laughs> I love shrimp. That's my favorite. Is it really? I yeah. could eat it all day, every day. And do you? No, not as often not as, as, often you as, as like. I want. You probably eat crab rangoon more than you eat shrimp. Yeah, but I can't Ooh, eat that because I'm pancreatitis. Now, are you ready I for our I think it has crab in it. What? Crab no, rangoon. it's imitation crab for okay. sure. It's crab Essence. Crab essence. Oh, I love that. Crab essence. Just like me. <laughs> Just a little I'm a cancer. Oh, 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 me too. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, we are oh the same. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Twinsies. Crab all right. All right. All right. So tying into your presence on YouTube, and like I feel like I've seen you more on social media as of late. Yeah. Was You've this really been playing? Was the game. this tied into like? Book promotion. Yeah, but I just for my own desire to but hustle now you're my having own fun. thing. Yeah. Or it's not fun. No, it is fun. Yeah. I'm enjoying the YouTube of it all. Like coming yes. up with these like you know Kooky things ideas. and I edit them myself. Yeah. What? I you love, don't have like, a team? Johnny's I, not doing it? Jo what is your job? <laughs> Johnny sets up the file for me. <laughs> <laughs> Johnny mics me. <laughs> yes, okay. Yeah, I think I have a some small team. Yeah. Supports. Yeah. I it's it, to me it's so fun. Like your tour announcements, just like things that you've been sharing and like the way you've been editing and I feel like you're so aware of your image, which to be frank, I think is like very polished, very put mm -hmm. together, serious. Oh, and I you're know. being playful now. Yeah, it nice is so like refreshing. I and I feel like, I mean, I'm such an outsider here. We just met, but I feel like you have always been this playful, but we haven't seen it. And so yeah. it is so fun to see oh. you on YouTube and on social Yay. media being yeah. playful. Okay, like thank you. Well, I and was drop. I yeah. was about to and drop. That's the real <laughs> secret to success. <laughs> Get her sauce. Well, for me, it was a little tequila every yeah. now and then. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Oh, yeah. I remember I was in your dressing room stealing your tequila at the mm -hmm. show. You know, yes, right? I'm not a tequila girl, She's so it's all yours. I'm a thief, mama. She's a thief. All I'll yours. It again. was there for you. <laughs> <laughs> She'll was, still continue. And I was left with the bottle. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I, I no, take I my didn't. bottle of whiskey every time from there. Really? Yeah. Are we not supposed to? I don't know. It's sorry to the Poisson Rouge in New York City. You're like, sorry for bringing you a sold out crowd. I'm every single night. my whiskey. That seems fair. We're going to be right back and we're after this. And we're back! Beautiful tone. I couldn't do it when the girls that can sing were here. <laughs> Beautiful tone. You, you didn't that. want to put them to shame. Yeah. No, 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 absolutely not. Speaking of being fun and goofy and playful, we have a little game to play with you. And it's uh -oh. based on the 2008 Tyra Banks interview with Beyonce not entitled... <laughs> Beyonce, say my name, say my name. But this time we're going to- The reason Beyonce stopped stop doing, doing, doing interviews. interviews. Exactly. <laughs> okay, so you know it. We had Laganja on. She goes, I don't know what you're talking about. And I was like, uh-oh. Okay. So this one we're going to call Slap My Name. And I'm going to give you a bunch of rapid fire questions that are based kind of on your name. Slant rhymes. Slant, slant rhymes. You know what I mean? Okay. Because you're a writer. You know what a slant rhyme oh, is. sure. It means it doesn't rhyme. <laughs> Sasha in store. Do- Oh. We're gonna start over again. <laughs> Cut that. Did you get it? Do you see my rhyme? In store. store. Instead of valor, in store. Sasha, in store. Did you do any in store book signing experiences when your book came out? Yes, I released the book at the Strand Bookstore <gasps> in New York City with Miss Malice. And I did a signing there very first day. And then I went to Mall of America and signed <gasps> right outside the Barnes and Noble where like- They wouldn't let you in? Where they wouldn't let me in the door. But <laughs> I could do it in the lobby. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> we had so many people, we had to do it in the atrium. No, that's not true either. Uh, but Britney Spears like performed there. At the Mall of America. At the Mall of America. Mall of America. Did America. you like the Mall of America? Did you get to walk around at it all? A little, the, the yeah. Roller coasters? I got, did you like, go on the roller coasters? I didn't go on the roller coasters. <sighs> the mall was like closing when I was leaving. Uh, oh. It's, her line was too long. Her what line do you was expect? Too long. That mall is huge. Did you know that there's multiple store like of the same store in it because it's so big yeah. that they have oh. like multiple um Aero pastels. Aero pastels. <laughs> of course, it's the most popular. <laughs> the Mall of America. Yeah. Okay. Sasha Major. Major. Sasha Major. 
Have you ever had to invoke the force majeure clause in your business contract? I don't know what that is. I, was I that don't the know what act that of is God? either. No. It's the act of God. Oh. It's like, oh, I can't come because force majeure. No. Okay. That was a good one. <laughs> that was a good one. It's a good <laughs> one. We learned, we learned something. We did. We all are learning together. <laughs> Sasha Endure. What's the longest theater piece or performance art piece you've sat through? Oh, my God. <laughs> I went to... Okay, I went to see this Tom Stoppard play at Lincoln Center that took all day. <gasps> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then, mm-hmm. what did you do? I sat through the whole thing. It was about Russian, like, utopian philosophers, and they just debated their ideas. I, I went... My dad is a Russian historian. It was oh, his right, dream right, right. to go. I went with him. He every break he would add more information to us. I was like every break was just more of the same. Oh God, but, you your know, poor brain. I'm a good son. Yeah, you are. <laughs> what so about you? Longest thing I sat through that wasn't good. You're like 30 minutes and then I left. Uh, Wicked Act Two. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I saw The Seagull one time when it was on Broadway, and it was Kristen. Someone was in the lead, and it was one of those plays where it was just like everything was stripped away so it was just like a table and then the actors you can't even drift your eyes to something beautiful yeah like I couldn't even look at stuff on the set or anything it was just like a black curtain so I kind of fell asleep fully fell asleep and the lady next to me had to keep elbowing me to wake up because I was snoring that's you were snoring I snored Sasha poor when was the last time you were poor (laughs) (laughs) oh how deep should we get I think there's like there's different kinds of wealth yes mine Mm -hmm. is costume wealth Oh. That's all she's got right now. Okay. <laughs> okay. Mm-hmm. Sasha Amour, what do you love? What do I love? Um, I love my partner, Johnny, and our dog, and our little queer life together in Brooklyn. Aww. Sasha Dior, do you have any Dior in your closet? No. Oh, I have... I have a makeup product. <laughs> okay. <laughs> in my makeup closet. The the, the like uh, the spray. I don't think they even make it anymore. It's like a spray foundation. Oh, oh is it the Will air flash? That. Or the yeah. air flash. Yes. 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 yes, I use that on the back of my head. But I've moved to Sally Hansen because Oh. Sasha you Poor. like the leg spray? <laughs> Sasha Poor. Sasha Poor. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, baby, I had to write a book for three years. <laughs> Sasha Poor. <laughs> Sasha Poor. <laughs> Sasha Implore. Please, 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 will you unlock my pathetic Oh my god. <laughs> it's not up to me. <laughs> so it's up to master. Up to you. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Sasha Eeyore, have you ever been a sad sack or a Debbie Downer? Yes. <clears throat> Kasha Valor, <laughs> have you ever worked with Miss Kasha Davis? Yes, in her home bar in Rochester. Right, Rochester. 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 Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and we like clicked right away. She's I love great. Her. She's a good I time guy. Yeah. She's and she so, needs to be around kids. So buff. Yeah. Cro- she's, you know yeah. I mean? Ooh. Crotch of Valor. Are you a fan of gray sweatpants season? Oh, yes. Top of Valor Ning to you. Are you a morning person? That was a bad one. <laughs> <laughs> top well, of the morning to you. Different direction. Uh, top. Uh, <laughs> top of yeah, uh, valorning to Top you. Top of valorning to you. Yeah, come on, I like it. <laughs> These are good. Thank you. <laughs> These are good. <laughs> are you a morning person? Yeah, I like that. I, yeah, I wake up with the sun. Slosh of allure. You ever get blackout drunk? I don't think I can get blackout drunk. I've got you know good drinking genes. Oh, oh. we know you have. Yeah, like blackout? constantly. I like she's that used to be doll. my go to. She's for Georgia Blackout. Well, Georgia Crisp. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where the crisp came from. Yeah, what crisp. is a Georgia Crisp? <laughs> no, I don't it know. It sounds like it would sounds be like Oh, maybe it's some sort of dessert. A Georgia Crisp? Ooh, I don't know. Like a, like Again, a I was not in my Alaska? right yeah. mind when that <laughs> character <laughs> came <laughs> out. <laughs> Sasha Ponda Floor. Are you a fan of dance hall music? Uh, not particularly. I need to explore. Sasha Shakur. Do you think Tupac is still alive on an <laughs> island somewhere? These are bad. I think these are hilarious. You're just not delivering them well. Also, uh, 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 you just said one. Explore. Sasha, explore. What's going on back door? <laughs> <laughs> not Sasha back door. No, no Sasha <laughs> back door. <laughs> See, these are the ones I should have been writing. Yeah, you, you said it. You should have been writing them. I'm not the producer here. Johnny, you got any? (laughs) 
Well, and we made it. And that's the end of the game. I'm glad that that happened. 